Oh, hi there, YouTube. I'm back again today for another game review. And today, I'm very excited for checking out Head of Mousehold from Fox Mind Games. This is for two to five players. Age is eight plus. It'll take about 30 minutes to play. And in Head of Mousehold, you're going to play as a clan of mice whose only goal is to get the most delicious cheese by the end of the game. And cheese are going to be worth different amounts of points. But it's not going to be that easy because you don't want to be the first mouse to the mousetrap because, as we all know, that mouse dies. You want to be the second mouse to the mousetrap. But sometimes the first mouse to the mousetrap will be a little bit loud and go, eh, I'm dying, and squeak, which will trigger the cat to come. And then that'll kill the second mouse. So sometimes you want to be the third mouse. And sometimes you want to be the slowest mouse because the slowest mouse just kind of creep up there and get it themselves. It is a lightweight, simple family game, but still with enough meat to be a game night game. But is it good? Let's open it up. I'll tell you what I think. Alrighty then, we're going to take a look at what you're going to get inside of Head of Mousehold. So first and foremost, we have our handy dandy rule booklet. Uh, you're going to need the first eight, nine pages. It's double-sided, full color, full of pictures, illustrations, examples. Very well done should you have you up and running in no time at all. Also, I give you a good feel for how the game plays right now because it is a pretty simple game. Also, I want to mention, there's a game summary card which really does help you out, especially your second, third, fourth time as you run through that. Very big thumbs up on that. So in, in Head of the Mousehold, what you're going to be doing is you were trying to acquire the most cheese points and these are the cheese points right here they'll come in increments of one two three and four you're going to get these by not being the first mouse to the mouse trap because that mouse is <laughs> dead but actually being the second mouse to the mouse trap assuming there's not a house cat prowling around because a squeaky mouse activated them but i'll show you how that works in a little bit so let's go over the components then let's get into the gameplay so first component wise everybody's going to get their stack of cards that will look like this and they're going to have all the different colors of mouse blue white orange purple and green you'll also notice that some of them have the symbol right there the squeaker symbol and that is something that's going to come up later in the game but that when a mouse gets caught in the trap that mouse is dead but if they squeak the next mouse that comes to the trap is also going to be dead because the house cat hears the mouse squeak and then he's going to end up killing the second mouse there but we'll get to that a little bit later uh next you're going to set out as many mouse traps as you have players so right now i have a four player game set up so everybody's going to take their cards put it in front of them everybody's going to get five of the little mouses which you'll see what those are for in a second you're also going to have event cards right here and i believe there's 10 different event cards that will do some pretty crazy random stuff but you do have some it's not like it's just random like oh you deal with it it's random like okay i can see the information out there and then i can deal with it uh, these are also optional as well so this is your first second third time playing the game you might not want to, want to play with it especially if you're playing with kids but once you know what you're doing i would highly recommend playing with these cards so let's go through the player aid card and i'll show you exactly how the game works so the first thing you're going to do is you're going to place a cheese token on each of the mousetrap cards so just randomly draw four of them and put boom 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 so three four one three next thing you're going to do is you're going to shuffle the speed cards and lay them on the table so these are the speed cards right here how this works is this is going to decide how fast the different mouses are going so right now the green mouse is the fastest followed by the orange mouse we'll just kind of cheat a little bit followed by the purple mouse followed by the white mouse followed by the blue mouse so right now if you played a green mouse down they are going to be the fastest to get to the mousetrap which once again can be bad because you don't want to be the first one there so next thing you're going to do choose your mouse cards and display the mouse meeples of the corresponding colors so now what you're going to do is you are going to look through your hand and you are going to pick out three of your mouse cards four if you're playing a two-player game and you're going to place those down in front of you so you're just going to place them down in front of you for right now so let's see uh i see that green is the fastest now there is one other rule that i want to mention right now which is the slowest mouse the very careful mouse is that super annoying mouse that you've all dealt with before if you have mice that eats the cheese and then just runs off or in our case eats the peanut butter so if you go with the blue mouse and they can sneak up even though the trap hasn't been it's off and steal the mouse so you know what i might lay down a blue i might lay down an orange and sure enough i'll lay down a green a green squeaker nonetheless so i've laid down those three cards so the next thing you're going to do is once everybody has laid their three cards in front of them you're going to mark which cards you have set down here so i would put down a green an orange and a blue so green orange blue they go in front of me like so and that's going to signify to other people that these three cards are green, orange, blue. Now, if I had two oranges and a blue, then I'd just put my orange and blue. If I put down three blues, I would just put my blue down. So you get the idea. 
Next thing you're going to do, back to our handy dandy player aid card, is you're going to reveal the daily event and apply its effect. So this is, obviously, if you're playing uh, the more advanced version of the game, which I would recommend, especially if you're uh, on the heavier side of games, is you reveal it. And, whoop, read the English side most likely. The slowest mouse color becomes the fastest. Move the bottom speed card to the top. So this is definitely a big change, because now that blue card that I played, you know, to be kind of a sneaker, is now going to be super duper fast. So... That changes everything a little bit, and now everyone has to deal with that. So, next step we have right here is we place your chosen mouse cards below the mouse trap cards, one at a time. So you start with the player who has the awesome first player head, which is this wooden uh, mouse trap, and you're going to place one of your cards like so, and I'll show you how it works. So let's pretend that uh, this guy has these three cards, this guy has these three cards, this guy has these three cards and honestly we're just going to play some randomly but we would just go around the table and we'll just push, we'll do it like this because i honestly don't care how it works out well, i just want to show you how it works so let's say this guy's going to go right here and the first card you play is going to be face down uh, so then this guy might go over here this guy might also want to go over here but the next card is going to go face up like so so then this guy might go over here this guy might go right there, and since it's the second card, it's going to go face up. This guy might go right here, and then in a shocking turn of events, that guy goes here, this guy goes here, 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 that, and we'll just say this happens. Nope, that would actually go like that. So, all the mice have been played, and we're actually just going to see what's kind of happened. Sorry about the glare, but it's going to be completely random. Flip up the face-down mouse cards under each mouse card and arrange them based on the speed Order. So it's not the order you got there necessarily, unless you have a tie, but it's actually the order that um, the mouse speed are. So we'll flip these ones over. And blue is the fastest, followed by green, followed by purple. Over here, we have a green squeaker, which is actually going to be the fastest, followed by these two. Over here, we have the blue, which is going to rocket to the front, then the purple, then the white. And then over here, we have the blue, which will be fastest, and then the orange. So let's take a look at what happened. So we'll start over here. The blue mouse is dead. So this card is out of the game. This person does not get their card back, which can come into play because you are going to play over the course of five rounds. And I have seen it happen where a kid who is really terrible at the game has not been able to play three mice down at the, the last round because all of his mice were dead. So this mouse is dead, and green comes up and gets this cheese. So now this guy or excuse me, the pencil, would get the points. This mouse right here, also not dead. They just go back to that player's hand. Uh, so what happens over here? This mouse is dead. Now you see they got the squeaker icon right there, which means that when they die, they squeak. This card goes away, which means the cat comes and kills this guy, which means this dude right here ends up getting the four points, and then this card goes back to its owner. So we come on over here. Blue, dead, purple, picks it up, swoons in there. Good for him. Card goes back to its owner, and then over here, dead. So, there we would go. Now, in the unlikely scenario, well, I shouldn't say unlikely, it happens from time to time, that no one gets the cheese, what happens is the next round, it just gets, boom, a bonus piece of cheese. Because what you do is everybody collects their stuff, and let's pretend that actually was there. You rinse, wash, and repeat. And you do that over the course of five rounds. After five rounds, whoever has the most points with cheese tokens is the winner of the game. That, in a nutshell, is how you play Head of Mousehold. Alrighty then, Head of Mousehold from Fox Mind Games. What are my final thoughts? Let's go with the pros, let's go with the cons. First, on the con side, game's not going to be for everybody for a variety of different reasons. And I don't have too many cons, to be brutally honest with you, with this game. The biggest one that I have is that I think it's best at four and five players as opposed to two and three players. But I will say, when you get to those higher player counts, you lose a good deal of control. And there's sometimes where you're playing cards, you're like, I know for a fact I'm not going to get the cheese here, just because there's already a boatload of cards there. And that is somewhat discouraging, but it doesn't happen terribly often. Another con I have with this game is that I wish there was more of those event cards. There's ten, which is great, which means you're not going to use five of them. But still, those are, without a out my favorite aspect of the game and i wish there was more i just wish you know if they ever come out with an expansion for this or even promos for this i would just love it if it's more of those event event cards because they really do shake up the game but that being said i could see how some people would not like those event cards because the thing is once you lay down your mouse you're just kind of at the whim of whatever the random event is and that random event might completely screw you up which 
everybody has to deal with, but still some people are not going to be a big fan of that mechanism. Maybe you could house rule it to make it so that everybody's got one gimme where you can take your mice back and put new mice out or something like that. Um, also, last comment I have of this game is that if you are playing with kids with this and you're an adult, you are going to have a huge leg up on them. Just your forward planning, your game sense, your knowledge of like, okay, so I know that this guy probably is going to play a fast one, and this one's going to be a squeaker, and this is going to be that. You can kind of out-game kids on this hardcore. And consistently, if I really think about it in my class, I can just crush kids at this game. It's kind of one of those games where if you're playing with kids, you don't want to put too much thought in what you do. Just kind of get all willy-nilly and a little bit silly. But that is kind of what you do with family games. That's all I got on the con side, to be honest with you. There's not too many holes to poke in this game. Moving on to the pros, Head of Mousehold is a great family game. Just no bones about it, no questions asked. If you have a family size of, say, four or five, and you're in the market for a family game for ages eight plus, absolutely check this one out. Just end of the discussion. I think you're going to like it. I have had zero bad experiences with this, and I've probably played it with 20, 30 kids. Same thing with a game night game. If you're in the market for a lightweight, filler weight, and about 30 minute game night style game, I've had a lot of success with this on my game nights as well, just playing with adults. Also, it works well as a mixed age game as well. And so what do I like about the game? So first and foremost, the theme comes across. I love when themes and games actually come across, and the theme in this game makes sense. The cards make sense. The squeaker makes sense. The mouth, the, the, the cat makes sense. The slow mouse makes sense. I like the events an awful lot. And I like the fact it's not just like, Here's a random event, and whatever happens, happens. No, you get a deal with it, and you have some information to look at. You can look at what other people's colors are, and you can kind of be like, hmm, well, nobody else has a purple out, so maybe I can sneak up and do this, or nobody else has a fa the fastest one out because now the middle one moved to the top or something like that, and you can kind of you know, start to formulate a plan. So it's not like they just completely hang out to drive with those event cards, so I really like how those work. Box size, very nice. The rule booklet is spectacular and should have you up and running in no problems. Uh, I don't think I had any issues with the rule booklet at all. I like the components. I like the artwork. And I think this is a spectacular uh, chameleon game. And when I say a chameleon game, I mean the kind of game that I could probably play this with just about any crowd, and it's probably going to go over well. I can play it on a game night as long as they're in the mood for a lightweight filler game. I can play this with kids in my class. I can play this with my family. Easy to learn. Easy to teach. Incredibly well done game. What I can absolutely recommend you check out. Head of Mousehold for Fox Mine. Definitely a great game that's going to be staying in my collection for a very, very long time. If you enjoyed this review, please sure to click on that subscribe button down below. If you want to support the channel, click on the Amazon Associates link down below in the show notes. Buy anything on Amazon. Throws a couple pennies my way. Same amazing prices. Really does help support the channel. And in the comments below, let me know. Do you have mice in your house? For me personally, yes. I actually have a funny antidote about this. Uh, a couple weeks ago, during game night, this little teeny tiny baby mouse, like this small, like maybe three-fourths the size of a chicken nugget, just like beep, 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 wanders up and walks to this lady's leg that's, that's in my game night. She just oh, freaks out because, I mean, you know, uh, um, she's scared of mice apparently. But the mouse is so young and so stupid, it doesn't know that, you know, hey, stay away from humans because we're the deadliest game. Uh, and so, you know, and I scare the thing off. I tried to catch it. And then it comes back later. It walks back up to the same lady, just right up to her leg. And then I caught it. And I was going to keep it because it was so cute. I was like, you know, I'm not a rodent guy. Not a rodent guy by any stretch of the imagination. Absolutely not. Never had a rat. Had no desire to have a rat. Ferrets, hamsters, none of that. Just get the heck out of here. But this mouse was so stinking cute. It was so stinking tiny. I was like... Can we keep it for the kids? And my wife wouldn't even look at it. It actually started a fight because like, come on, why don't you at least look at the mouse? Look at the mouse. Because my wife, she is a rodent fan. She used to have rats growing up. She used to tell me about how great pet rats were. And I'm just, <laughs> no thank you. Uh, <clears throat> but yeah. So yeah, I do have mice issues at my house. Uh, I don't think they're ever going to go away. Like we probably kill about three or four mice a month, either in my garage or in my house, a lot more frequently in the garage because it's just an old house. You know, it was built before, uh, it was built 1940 or something like that. But there you go. I do got mice problems. Do you have mice in your house? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, thanks for your time, YouTube.